Good morning. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to be showing you how to use one of the templates that you purchased from um, the Buttons for Bonnie site on Etsy. Um, if you are just joining us and you have not purchased one yet, you can look in the box below and see the link for our website. And you can access this template and many other wonderful templates to use for you, your business, um, your group, your school, etc. So first and foremost, um, this video is just going to insert, uh, is just going to cover opening it within Design Space and using uh, Design Space to give you some of the basic text that's needed, okay? So I'm in Design Space right here, and Design Space, obviously, you can use your internet browser, whatever you may use. I'm personally using Chrome, and I've already went in and I've opened me a new canvas here. Okay, it's blank, it's clean, I have my Layers toolbar here. I'm going to have a top toolbar that I reference frequently, and I'm going to have this left main kind of control center toolbar as well, where I go to insert things. So I'm going to press upload because I want to bring in the file that I'm going to use. I'm going to press upload image, and this screen is going to appear where I can import the file. I'm going to press browse, and I know that I the file I want to open is on my desktop. Okay, so when I say browse, I'm going to go over here, click desktop, and I'm looking for volleyball player's ball. There we go. This is my volleyball player's ball, and I want to open the SVG document. Okay. Now, if the SVG ever doesn't work for you, you can always upload a PNG image, and Design Space will trace it for you. Okay, and it will end up doing the same exact thing. And I know you're saying, what about the text? I'm getting ready to explain. They both function the same. So if one gives you a problem, on anybody's purchase. You can always use the PNG file, but let's use the SVG document because I do prefer it. Um, it's going to give you your cleanest image and your, your, your cleanest cuts, in my opinion. Not really. I know they do the same thing, but for all intents and purposes, let's use the SVG file. So I'm going to open this and it's going to open it. It's uploaded. Put some type of an image name and we're going to save it to the um, design space or the CryCut server. So you can see here, this is an old upload. You can see here I've uploaded this, and now that it's uploaded, I'm going to click on my file, and I'm going to go to Insert Images, and voila, it magically appears inside of Design Space. Now, I want to take and change the team name portion of this first, okay? Obviously, I click on it, oh no, it doesn't work. I purchased it, but I cannot, what's wrong? Why can't I change? Okay. You cannot change the text, obviously. You've probably <laughs> realized this by now. Design Space, um, as well as Silhouette Studio, they do not allow you to import a point and click text box, meaning you cannot insert something from an outside source that you do not purchase from them that you literally can just click like that and then immediately type in the text. So instead, the workaround is this we're going to use the text that's in my template and we are going to use it as a guide to position our text box, okay? And this will actually give you a greater degree of freedom and movement. Um, you'll be able to use the file uh, to its fullest extent this way, um, much more than if it was just a point and click text box, okay? So, first of all, we're going to click over here on this left hand, this main toolbar, and we're going to insert a text box, which you'll see comes up right here on your screen. Now, in this text box, I'm going to type my team name. We're going to put happy feet because I think. Oh, okay. Now, I see that it's caps locked up. You see it's um, all capitals. I can see that I'm writing in lowercase, so I'm going to backspace, turn my caps lock on, and then I'm going to type in happy feet. Okay? So, I've got happy feet, and if I click outside of that box, well, I did, there we go. And I pull it up here, I can see that my full team name is here. The only problem is my team name doesn't look like this team name, and that's because I need to change the font. There's a previous video that shows you how to download the fonts and install them onto your system. I'll link it in the comments, the section below, um, so you can see that one. We're not going to cover that in this video. Now, I know that when I downloaded this, there was a folder that came with it that says font and instructions. I'm going to go and I'm going to open up that folder, and I'm going to open up the file that's the font list right here and when I open up this file I opened up the folder I opened up you see right up here 
you see where it says up here at the very top toolbar when the when it opens you're gonna see volleyball players ball font list not the installation instructions for the fonts but the font list and we're gonna wanna have this handy so we can see what font is used in what area of um, of our template so I'm gonna scroll down here I'm wanting to do the team name so I see there's the fonts and it says here that the font that's used for team name is collegiate and it's going to be collegiate heavy outline so I'm going to minimize this so I can get it easily and then once I've clicked on my text box I'm going to go to this top toolbar and I'm going to select the font and then I'm going to actually hit system fonts and I'm going to type in col and I'm hitting system fonts because this is uploaded into I'm sorry this is installed on my computer when you install these fonts on your computer you can do all um, but I just like system because it's a whole lot faster so I'm gonna start typing in collegiate and boom there we go collegiate heavy outline okay it's a single layer cut file I'm gonna click it and when I click it ta-da isn't that awesome my happy feet is now or my team name is now in the same font as the team name on the template that I've purchased now the only thing is when I line it up the team name is curved in my name is not so we're gonna cover I'm gonna pull this down where you can see we're gonna cover how to curve the text and match the curve exactly so that your team name looks like this team name okay so first and foremost what we want to do there's this wonderful little tool that is on the desktop version of design space they haven't put it on the mobile version yet so I highly recommend for curvature to use oops sorry for curvature of any type of word to use the desktop version of Design Space. So um, I'm going to click on this text box here, and then on this top toolbar, you see where it says curve. You're going to need to click curve, and this is going to allow you, you can go left and curve it that way, up, or you can go right and get a positive number and curve it down. So I want to curve it down, and I'm just going to play around with the curvature until. I'm going to kind of put it over on top of it and superimpose it. Let's see. I want it a little more curved because I'm trying to match up that curve, okay? And that looks roughly about the right curvature. So let's see. Let's pull it down on top. Yeah, it's roughly the right curvature. Maybe a little more curve, okay? Um, and I can tell that because you see the T's hanging out below the T from where it says team name and my H. You can see where the T's kind of hanging out a little bit below. So let's curve it just a wee bit more. And that should be good. Okay, so I've got this curved. However, you will notice that my writing or my team name has gaps in between it, which nobody wants. Gross, horrible looking, unprofessional. This over here is beautiful with no gaps. So I'm going to show you how to take the gaps out of your curved text in Design Space. First and foremost, what you will need to do is you will need to click your text box. And there's a number of different ways to modify this box. If you will go up here to the top portion, this top toolbar, you're going to find an area that says letter space. And you will notice if you will decrease the letter space, you will see that that space between your letters starts to decrease and it starts to pull them together into a really happy alignment so I'm going to decrease this letter space you can go as close as you want um, obviously if you're going to be cutting letters you probably don't want them to touch but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to we're going to go as such to decrease all of our um, spaces now I'm going to zoom in uh, or first I'm going to pull this over am I still in the correct curvature yes okay so I'm in the correct curvature I'm going to zoom in up here and in order to, that's the template, in order to make sure my writing is in alignment, it's time for me to turn off this team name, okay? So over here on my layers panel, um, I, right here I have, you can see here, this is the, the file that's open, and when I click it, it opens. If you go down to where it says team name and the eyeball is open, if you'll click the eyeball to close, it's going to take the eyeball off, okay? So we're going to be working on putting our text into this template at this point so I'm gonna pull my happy feet down and I see oh yay happy feet there it is right there but the spacing's kinda jumbled and 
I don't want it jumbled. I want it to look nice and neat. Okay. So let's zoom in some and I'll show you. This is too close. But then I don't like this massive gap because the bottom of Y's always end up looking like that. So what I'm going to do now, I've already corrected the curvature. I could do one of two things. Now that I'm close in here, I could go back up to my letter spacing and increase it some. And just by increasing my letter spacing, I can make my writing completely fill this top text box area. Okay? So let me zoom out and show you. It totally fills it. Can you see that? Fully filled. Okay? But if you still want greater control and you want to, say, move this P a little closer to the Y so that it's a little closer together, you can do one of two things. You can highlight. No, you cannot highlight. Disregard that. Different program. Cannot highlight, but the other thing you can do is you can actually um, detach all of these letters and you can use them individually. So up on your top toolbar to get this yucky space out, you're going to click Advanced and you're going to click Ungroup to Letters. And when you ungroup to letters, each letter becomes its own little movable image or actually letter box, text box on your screen. And so what you can do with this is you can pull this over as such and you can basically play with your alignment until you have the same space between them. Y's are always weird with alignment because the bottom of the letter is not part of the farthest most outer part of the letter. It's the top of the letter. And so as human beings we're accustomed to going from large at the bottom to smaller at the top. The Y is opposite. It's large at the top, smaller at the bottom. So you always get a funky space here. Even though the spacing will be the same, it's still going to look a little weird between a Y and any other letter. And so that's why I chose to show you this. So I'm going to move this A about such. And then my feet looks pretty good. This E could be moved a little bit if I want to move, move the feet a little bit. Um, and like I said, we're going for optimal, not perfect. Um, the human eye has a tendency to pull things together. And so as long usually as you're in about 10%, um, 10 20 percent of, of the actual alignment of the curvature your eye is going to go ahead and tell you that it's lined up together and pulled in neatly so that looks awesome so now that I have got my happy feet arranged I'm going to draw a box over it using my clicker no not that box actually if the box won't draw you should be able to just draw the box but it's going to pick up my template you can click the letter hold down your shift button on your keyboard and click all the other letters as well. Okay? All the letters that are in your name. And then go over to your layers panel, let go of the shift button, but don't touch the letters. Press group. And it's now all put back together and you can keep it on your template. Okay? And you will do the same exact process to get the curvature at the bottom. The only difference when you do the curved writing at the bottom, obviously it'll be a different font. Um, but whenever you do the curved writing for the bottom, um, instead of curving it, you pull your the we pulled the cursor to the right to get it to curve down. You'll need to pull it to the left um, to get it to curve upwards. Um, same concept though. Thank you so much. I hope this helped you be able to use our template to their fullest extent, and I'll see you soon.